Why do astronauts float? Yes? Because there's no gravity. Put your hands up for that answer. Why do astronauts float? There's no gravity. You ask any random 100 people in the street, at least 99 of them are going to give you that answer. It's not true. This is another example of our intuitions failing us, so we're going to try to pull this apart. You might be wondering what this is doing here. We weren't just untidy with the setting up. This is actually going to come in useful in a minute. So let's take apart, first of all, this idea that there's no gravity in space. Let's build a model. This is the International Space Station. Looks an awful lot like a tennis ball. Um, but at the moment, this is the International Space Station. My fist is the Earth. And the International Space Station is going around the Earth. But there is another thing in this model. There is one more piece to this model, the string. What does the string represent? Yeah. Say it loud. Gravity. The string is gravity. There's plenty of gravity in space. If it wasn't, all of our satellites would do that. There's plenty of gravity up there. There's an awful lot of gravity in space. It's the reason that the astronauts go around the Earth instead of just flying away from it. It's the reason we go around the sun. It's the reason the moon goes around us. There's no shortage of gravity in space. So what's really going on? Well, I've got some pictures for you. These are a little bit strange. And I'm going to need someone's help. If I can borrow someone with a good throwing arm. <laughs> um, can, can I have the, the lady right there? Hello. What's your name? Jessica. Come on around here, Jessica. Come on up the stairs there. Now, if we can have the pictures up on the screen. Now, Jessica, we're going to juggle. No, we're not. We're going to throw things. I can't juggle to save my life. Come on over here for me. Ignore the fact that there's a thousand people staring at you. Don't worry. It's not as scary as you might think. Um, I'm going to give you a ball. Merry Christmas. You stand right here for me. Now, we're going to throw this ball just gently. We're going to toss it down towards the floor. Uh, but I don't want you to throw it up. I don't want you to throw it down. I want you to launch it as flat as you can. Try to throw it absolutely horizontally. I want us to watch very carefully the path of the ball. Go. Still hit the ground. You launched it straight across, but it still hit the floor. Did it go to the floor in a straight line? No, it curved down towards the ground. Now, if you'd thrown that even harder, it still would have curved, but it would have curved for longer. A longer, flatter curve, but still a curve. Thank you very much for the lady with the throwing arm. Round of applause for Jessica. Now, if we imagine, instead of Jessica here, if we imagine we had the Hulk, uh, the Incredible Hulk standing on the top of Mount Everest. So let's see what kind of things he can get up to. OK, now Mount Everest is in entirely the wrong place there, but you get the point. So we've got the Hulk standing up on Mount Everest, and he's juggling cars and just giving them a throw every now and again. If you throw the car long enough, you're going to get a long, flat-ish curve towards the ground. Crash it down somewhere. Maybe he throws a little bit harder. Still curves down towards the ground, but it takes longer. I wonder if he threw it just right. <laughs> it's still a long curve, and the car is still falling. It is being pulled away from its straight line by gravity. As it curves towards the ground, well, the ground curves away, curvature of the Earth. As the car falls towards the planet, the planet curves away from it. You can fall forever and miss, as long as you're moving fast enough sideways. At the height of Mount Everest, 8.8 .8 kilometers high, uh, the Hulk would need to throw that car at about 28,500 kilometers per hour, and he'd need to stand there for the next 90 minutes before it came all the way around and smacked him in the back of the head. So. Anything thrown hard enough sideways around the world, if you throw it at just the right speed, it falls. But it falls forever. Falling is the reason that astronauts look like they're floating. Let me see. Cup with a hole in it. A space down there to make a mess. 
and a ladder. Because I don't have enough challenges in my life and I really hate heights. Now, let me put some water in here. This cup does have a hole in it. It's right there. You. Looks a little bit wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> so if we uncover the hole, obviously, we keep the cup still, we uncover the hole, water starts to flow, you see the spurt of water coming out the side of the cup. What if I drop it? You might get wet. <laughs> I thought when I saw you sit there, I thought, should I tell her? Nah. <laughs> if I drop it, I will, of course, have uncovered the hole. You're going to have about a second to make your observations here. As this falls towards the floor, I want you to look closely and see if you can spot a stream of water spurting out the sides. You ready? Any stream of water there? No. Nothing spurting out the sides. As the water was falling, so was the cup. What's this got to do with astronauts floating? Astronauts are falling. They are falling around the planet. That means they are being pulled on by gravity as hard as they can be. But so is the floor they're standing on. So is the shuttle, so is the space station, whatever it is that they're inhabiting at the time. The shuttle is falling, the astronaut is falling. The astronaut so much as twitches his legs. He's just given himself a little launch upwards. But there's no extra leftover gravity that only works on humans to pull him back down to the ground again. He's already in the grip of gravity. He's already falling towards the floor as fast as he can, but the floor is falling away from him. So the really tricky part is astronauts float in space not because there's no gravity, but because there is. They're floating because of gravity. They're floating because they're falling. And you can only fall under the influence of gravity. Does that sound like common sense? Not exactly. Had to go a little bit further than just common sense there. NASA, amazing institution that it is, still incredibly has people asking, why do we bother? It's so expensive. And no, it's not. It's a tiny fraction of a percentage of the annual military budget. But why, why do we bother? Well, a common answer to that question is all of this. And there's a lot more than that, by the way. These are spin-off technologies that have come out of the work that NASA does. The problem is, saying that that's why we bother with NASA, oh, it leaves a lot out. Um, I'm reminded of uh, uh, Richard Dawkins, who once said that saying that NASA is important because we get non-stick frying pans is kind of like saying music is important and useful because it provides good exercise for the violinist's right arm. But there's a bit more to it than that. It's the experience that, that the knowledge that it gives us isn't just immediately useful to us in an everyday technical economic sense. It means something to us. It showed us who we are where we are in the universe. It's shown us our place. This is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field image that's been adjusted to show the relative distance to every speck there. Every speck you're looking at is a galaxy. The distances were worked out from this image by looking at the redshift in the light from these galaxies. As galaxies spread away from us, as they move, their light stretches on its way towards us. We can measure that stretch and tell us exactly how fast those galaxies are moving apart from us. This also tells us how far away they are. The number of galaxies you're seeing there can be found in a patch of sky that you can completely hide with a single grain of sand held at arm's length. Hold up one grain of sand in front of this apparently empty, boring patch of sky and you have covered all of that. Tiniest fraction of the sky. And it's all there. Now that stretch, that expansion of the universe, stretching the light out, if you look at each of these little points here, 
See, as this spreads, as it stretches, as it expands, these points get further away from each other. Here's how we can tell how far apart things are, though. You notice that this one to this one, this moved that far away. In the same time, this compared to this moved twice as far. It's two distances away in the same time. This one round here is three distances away in the same time. From the point of view of anyone standing there, this is moving fairly quickly, this is moving really quickly, and this is moving ridiculously fast. But it's a result of how far away from us it is. So just by looking at images, pictures, looking closely at the quality of the light in those images, and thinking beyond our first thoughts, we can figure out that we are one tiny speck in an enormous, expanding, amazing universe. That's what science is for, broadening our horizons. It's not just to bring you the next model iPhone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to my inane dribble. I uh, hope you had a reasonable time so far. And I'm going to clear my junk off stage and leave. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.